So in this video we're going to find the inverse of a matrix, but instead of using Gauss-Jordan elimination, we're going to use GeoGebra Classic 5 to accomplish the task. So this is the same matrix that we, or this is the same matrix for which we found the inverse in the previous video. So what we want to do is find the inverse for this matrix, but we're going to do it using GeoGebra Classic 5, which will then reveal whether or not I made an error in my arithmetic calculations on the previous video because I was lazy and did not check my work. So the idea is uh, that we are going to use GeoGebra and we saw in the previous video that what we want to do is augment the matrix we're interested in, if we're wanting to find the inverse of A, we want to augment A with the appropriate identity matrix. So in GeoGebra, what I'm going to do is close my graphics window because I don't need it for this. And then in View, I'm going to open my spreadsheet view. And I'm going to type that matrix A off the PowerPoint slide and into my spreadsheet. And then I'm going to augment it with the, this is a 3x3 three three matrix, so we'll augment it with the 3x3 three three identity matrix. So I'm going to type in my matrix 1, negative 1, negative 2. The second row is 2, negative 3, negative 5, 2, negative 3, negative 5. And the third row is negative 1, 3, 5, so we get negative 1, 3, 5. And then we want to augment this matrix with the identity matrix, the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So the first row is going to be 1, 0, 0. The second row will be 0, 1, 0. And the third row will have a 0, 0, 1. So when I'm done, I should have the matrix A, for which I'm interested in finding an inverse if it exists. And then I've augmented it with the 3x3 three three identity matrix. And again, we only can look for uh, an inverse matrix if we have a square matrix. So once I've taken my matrix A and augmented it with the 3x3 three three identity matrix, I highlight everything. So left click and hold, right click to bring up the context menu. I go to create and I create a matrix. And then as I uh, talked about in the previous video, I like to rename my matrices so they're easier for me to type. So I'm going to call this guy capital M, turn cap locks off, capital M, and then hit OK. And now I'm done with my spreadsheet view. I've used it to create the augmented matrix. I don't need the spreadsheet view anymore. But I do want to open my computer algebra system or CAS menu. And I'll give it a little more space. And I want to put this matrix, just like we did in Gauss-Jordan elimination, we uh, want to put this into reduced row echelon form. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to type reduced. GeoGebra will, GeoGebra will guess the function I'm wanting to use, reduced row echelon form. I'm going to hit Enter because that's correct. It automatically highlights the matrix, so I don't want to touch my mouse or, or do anything other than just type in the name of my matrix, which will automatically replace what GeoGebra highlighted. And then I can just hit the Enter button to put my matrix into reduced row echelon form. And if the inverse exists, then the original matrix A right here needs to be replaced with the 3x3 three three identity matrix here, which it is, which then tells us that the, uh, the part that's left on the right-hand side, where the identity matrix used to be, this part is the inverse. So the inverse matrix is 0, 1, 1, 5, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, 2, 1. And in general, when you're working on homework, what I suggest is if you're asked to find the inverse of a matrix A like this, uh, using Gauss-Jordan elimination, so you're supposed to do it by hand showing your work, do it in GeoGebra Classic 5 first, see what the answer is. That way when you get done and your, your uh, final result does have the identity matrix probably on the left-hand side, you can look to see if your right-hand side entries are correct. You can see whether you've made that arithmetic error that we're all so good at, at making.